Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Mark, and today we are going to review the semi frequent adverse event uh, that is neuropathy for some groups of prescription drugs. So, we are going to review which drugs and in which situations may lead to neuropathic pain and neuropathy in general. So, let's review the information. So, what are the types of neuropathy that we will more directly or more frequently associate with prescription drugs? it will be mainly a peripheral sensitive neuropathy. So we will find it uh, not in the central nervous system, so not as brain fog, for example, but as alterations in the sensitive nerve, so like strange sensations uh, in the periphery, mainly in uh, stocking and glove distribution, very similar to diabetic neuropathy and the, the way we first find it. We already reviewed diabetic neuropathy in two uh, very concrete videos. I will leave a link up here so you can check them out. But the one induced by prescription drugs, of course, will be very similar. So it will start in the most peripheral parts of our body, so our toes, for example, and then it will be uh, it will slowly come up and then it will invade or let's say it will appear on our hands and it will also start crawling up from the nerves of our hands. Uh, they it will often associate with neuropathic pain, so a uh, very characteristic pain associated with damage to the nerves. Of course, the prescription drugs in these cases are causing damage to our nerves, so that's the origin of the painful sensation and of the neuropathy. And this neuropathic pain can be both very difficult to treat and very intense. So the main thing we have to do is detect it uh, when it's starting and give treatment when it's starting uh, and in this case avoid or suspend the drugs if it's possible that's leading to this drug-induced uh, neuropathy uh, this might be reversible so when we stop the drug it might disappear the neuropathy however as most neuropathies if it's advanced enough if we have enough time with the neuropathy it might also be irreversible and a lot of patients mainly in some of the drugs that we are going to mention are going to be in an irreversible situation so they will have to live the rest of their lives with the neuropathy underlines the great importance of detecting it and treating it very very fast so what are the causes when we give these prescription drugs we are going to induce cellular death so we are going to kill the neurons that should transmit mainly sensations uh, pain also sometimes uh, some motor parts and even autonomic nerves we are going to find uh, the destruction of myelin and myelin is of course like a type of fat that covers our nerves and makes them very efficient so we have like a demyelinating uh, disease or lesion with these drugs we are going to have uh, the buildup of free radicals toxic substances that can hurt myelin and other parts of our nerves mitochondrial damage and leading to a low level of energy in our neurons and we may even find ourselves with nutrient alterations very common with some cofactors and some vitamins so we might find that these drugs are leading to a, de a deficit a very important deficiency in vitamins cofactors and other nutrients leading all of them to the destruction of the nerve or at least the damaging of the nerve if it's uh, let's say moderate damage then we might be able to reverse it if it's as we were saying a very severe and advanced damage to our nerve then we will not be able to reverse the damage that we find in our patients and so which drugs are going to be the main culprits of this uh, drug induced neuropathy first of all of course chemotherapy a very known a group of drugs that cause neuropathy not all of chemotherapeutics are going to cause neuropathy there are other toxicities associated with other drugs we are going to mention in a bit which chemotherapy agents are the most frequently associated with uh, neuropathy we might find also some antibiotics uh, drugs used for TV, for tuberculosis, antivirals, ma mainly for HIV, antiparasites like uh, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, some neurology drugs and some cardiovascular drugs. If we zoom in on those, first of all, chemotherapy, of course, drugs that are used to treat cancers, different types of cancers. We are going to find some of the most frequent drugs that cause Neuropathy are platins, and from all the platins, one very frequent example is cisplatin. 
We might find also vinca alkaloids like vincristine, also very frequently associated with neuropathy, taxanes like paclitaxel, immune modulators like thalidomide, and epithelones like ixabepilone. So all of these through various mechanisms we will not review in this session, but all of these may lead to uh, neuropathy. Once again, some of the most frequent cisplatin, vincristine, paclitaxel, and thalidomide are uh, frequent examples of patients de uh, developing later on neuropathy. They have a cumulative effect, so the higher the dose and the longer the exposure, the highest the risk of uh, neuropathy. This is going to happen for most of the drugs that we mention. However, it, it is also important to mention that even a patient that finishes the treatment with, for example, some of the, of the drug that we're mentioning here, does not have neuropathy and he or she later later on develops the neuropathy like four five six months uh, after stopping the drug this might also happen so it doesn't mean that in 100 percent of the cases we are going to find the neuropathy during treatment there are going to be patients that even we uh, hoped and uh, we thought that had uh, not develop neuropathy, but with the following months after the treatment was suspended, they start developing this uh, neuropathy. We find this also for antibiotics. So in antibiotics, drugs that directly target bacteria, but we also have, as I was saying, antivirals, antiparasites. Some of the most frequent are metronidazole. Uh, this is very used for certain gastrointestinal infections and some parasites. Chlorokinolones like levofloxacin and ciprofloxacin. Nitrofurantoin, uh, very used for urinary tract infections. Linezolid, dapsone, isoniazid. These are uh, a drug for tuberculosis. Etambutol, chloramphenicol, hydroxychloroquine. Something used against parasites. It is also used in rheumatology and salcidabine. And in the groups of drugs from the car cardiovascular and neurological system, amiodarone, that is an antiarrhythmic drug for the heart, procainamide and hydralazine. Procainamide is another antiarrhythmic and hydralazine is for a hypertension and phenytoin and disulfiram. One is for epilepsy and one is for alcohol addiction. So those are also drugs that are associated with neuropathy. So what can we do with these patients? Of course, the first measure would be to suspend the drug if we are finding some uh, evidence of neuropathy. But there are some cases where we cannot suspend the drug, whether the patient needs it because it's life-saving or it's limiting the spread of the cancer or is, of course, necessary for the management of its tuberculosis. We cannot suspend those drugs because the life of the patient would be in risk. So in these patients, we need to constantly evaluate the well-being of their neurons. So we need to explore them to check for strength, for sensitivity, even for autonomic results. All of this, once again, needs to be planned, needs to be discussed with the patient from the beginning of the treatment, and needs to be decided with the patient and family and caregivers. Number two, we should not combine, if possible, once again, uh, with other neurotoxic drugs or other risk factors. Here, of course, uh, limiting the other sources of neuropathy. If we have a patient that needs one of these drugs and also is, for example, a patient with diabetes, then we have to make sure that diabetes is properly controlled so we don't potentiate the toxicity from these prescription drugs with the toxicity with uh, of high glucose levels. Uh, the same for herpes, the same for all of the things that may lead to a neuropathy. With this, we don't erase the risk that these prescription, prescription drugs uh, confer the patient. However, we can limit the damage and we can save a lot of nerves and improve the quality of life of the patients that need these drugs. Very important to keep this in mind. Very important to educate our patients, our caregivers, and that we all know that these drugs may present this risk factor and that we have to limit the risk factor that we find with these patients. 
that's basically the information. This is the references where I uh, took the information for this video, if, so you can check them out and learn more about this important topic. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and you now are more prepared to have these types of conversations when you prescribe on or when you have to use these uh, drugs with the risk of neuropathy. Thank you very much. And as always, help us change the world. Share the information.